Magic the Gathering is a complex game. With more than 27,000 unique cards, Magic has been characterized as the most complex game in the world. When a player sits down to draft a cube, they're immediately hit with lots of information. Great cube curators consider how complexity within their environment shapes player's experience. Hey, I'm Chillin TG, amateur YouTuber and full-time owner of this beautiful road from Magic Con Vegas, and I'd like to talk about two different types of complexity within Magic and how cube curators can harness their knowledge to curate their environments and better achieve their play goals. So what is complexity within Magic the Gathering? Complexity is defined as the state or quality of being intricate or complicated. In 2019, computer science researchers proved that a game of magic between two players was so complex as to be non-computable. Now there are two different types of complexity within magic. The first is what we'll call overt complexity. Overt complexity is the visible complexity inherent in a card's individual mechanics and rules text. Let's take a look at a few examples of cards with this type of complexity. From one of magic's latest sets, the card Yenna Red Tooth Regent. Yenna is what we will call high on comprehension complexity. Her activated ability copies enchantments that you don't already have other copies of. Then, if Yenna targeted an aura, she untaps and you get some card selection. As a player, you likely had to read and then reread that rules text maybe two or three times to fully understand it. The other type of overt complexity is tracking complexity. Tracking complexity refers to the task of keeping track of multiple game states or things at once. Cards that generate an external game piece or require tracking of a new game status are high in this type of complexity. Now let's contrast these examples with cards that have low overt complexity. Did you see the difference? You immediately understood and comprehended each card quickly and easily. These cards have low overt complexity, but chill, won't low complexity cards lead to boring and dull gameplay? Not if those cards interact in interesting ways. This idea of interaction leads to emergent complexity. Well-known cube curator Caleb Gannon defines emergent complexity in this way. If my game has a card pool of 100 cards and I introduce 100 additional cards into it, I don't want the depth of the game to only increase by a factor of two. While the number of cards has doubled, the number of card pairs has quadrupled, and the number of card triples has gone up 10 times. If we design around enabling two and three plus card pairings, instead of relying on complexity inherent in individual cards, we can create significantly more depth in our game through emergent complexity. Looking through the lens of card interaction rather than overt complexity on the face of the card, our examples of simple cards immediately yield a new depth. Fastbond and Crucible of Worlds have a player thinking about how they can use lands in their graveyard. Prosperity combined with Leovold turn this hard draw spell into your advantage. Turnabout and Sunblast Angel equals a one-sided board wipe. These examples of emergent complexity yielded from these card combinations will add depth to your gameplay and prevent overt complexity from overloading your players. Treat complexity like a budget for your cube. You'll need to afford some complexity, but look to cut the unnecessary expenses and complexity that you may have and find ways to get the result more efficiently. Doing so will provide a positive play experience for players at all skill levels, enabling newer players to engage with your environment while also providing veteran players depth and complexity to explore. Here are three considerations with complexity when building and curating your environment. First, it is easier to add in complexity later than try to remove complexity along the way. Try to meet your play and design goals using less overtly complex cards. When considering new card options for your cube, ask yourself which of these options has less overt complexity. And finally, recognize your own complexity bias with your cube and environment. 
As the curator of your cube, you're gonna be intimately familiar with your cards. So you're not going to necessarily see the added complexity that you've been adding in over time. Thanks for watching, and I encourage you to look through your cube and see what new depth you can uncover using this lens of complexity. So anyways. Thanks for hanging, thanks for chilling with me here. Don't touch that dial and let's keep cubing.